right, before I start, I'd like to mention what my background is, and that's European and American art history. I, I'm fairly ignorant of, of Asian art history, African art history, etc. So just want to clear that up to, so you know where I'm coming from. Uh, to define art, we have to start with a definition given by the dictionary. It reads, the conscious arrangement of forms to produce beauty. Now, you can see how that can be problematic. Uh, just the, the concept of beauty itself can be uh, conflicting. For instance, if the artist thinks it's beautiful, but the viewer does not, can it be both art and non-art at the same time? No, that's not possible. So we have to elaborate on that. In fact, there's a whole book written on how to define art called Definitions of Art by Stephen Davies, a whole book like that. So it's a basic issue of aesthetics or philosophy of art. Let me go over some basic concepts regarding art. There's art history, which is the study of art of the past, including styles and movements and individual artists. Art appreciation, which is viewing and learning about art in order to enjoy it and art criticism, which is writing and talking about art to describe, interpret, and evaluate uh, the artwork. It does not numb the art, rather it changes the reader, viewer, by furthering understanding about it. All right, so to start defining art, we should start with what a definition is uh, in terms of necessary and sufficient conditions. <laughs> Uh, which is the term if and only if. Suppose quality X is, pro is proposed as the definition of art. To test this, we ask two questions. Are there examples of art which do not have X? If so, X is not a necessary condition of art. Second, do some things have X but are not art? <clears throat> if so, X is not a sufficient condition of art. To be successful as a definition, Anything that is art must have quality X, X being a necessary condition. And anything that has quality X must be art, meaning X is a sufficient condition. So let me give you an example of that. The Greek definition of man is a rational animal. Plato is a man if and only if he is a rational animal. So rationality <coughs> is individually necessary. Animality is individually necessary but both of them together are jointly sufficient. So that's the basics of what a definition is. So let's go into some early definitions of art. Now, in this area, I'm starting with modernism, uh, 1860 Europe. Uh, that's my background, is European art history, and that's where modernism is considered to start. So there are early definitions of art include realism, which is imitation of reality, what you're seeing, expressionism, which is <clears throat> the artist is transmitting some kind of emotion, and formalism, which is um, the art, concentrating on the artwork itself. So those three areas are locuses of meaning, the, the artist, the object, and the viewer. So to give an example of that, Courbet, Gustave Courbet in 1860 painted scenes from life, his locality. Burial at Ornan was, would be an example. He's painting this burial of a local person. Uh, Tolstoy in 1898 advocated that artists should transmit feelings from the artist to the viewer via the artwork. So that would be an expressionist uh, approach. And to do the formalist approach would be Clyde Bell in 1914 who wrote about significant form which produces an aesthetic emotion. So those three are basic theories of art. Now in 1980, a, a guy named Tarkarkowitz tried to use a shotgun approach uh, with no mention of necessary and sufficient features. Let me give you what his definition is. Production of beauty, representation of reality, creation of forms, expression of the artist, production of aesthetic experience, a production of shock. A work of art is either a reproduction of things or a construction of forms or an expression of experiences such that it is capable of evoking delight, emotion, or shock. So he tries to cover every, every uh, feature, but 
notice that he's, a lot of the emphasis is on the reaction of the viewer. And he doesn't go into the conditions or features of the artwork itself. In 1953, Ludwig Wittgenstein, the Austrian philosopher, said that definitions do not have to be in terms of necessary and sufficient conditions. Family resemblances is what his approach was, meaning a, quote, a complicated network of similarities overlapping and crisscrossings. He used the example of game, the concept of a, concept of a game, to be equivalent of art. You, you, just, you don't use necessary and sufficient conditions, but you rely on these other factors, like similarities, overlapping, uh, crisscrossings. Morris Weitz in 1956, you don't have to remember these names, just recognize the uh, concepts that they're talking about. He said that art cannot be defined with necessary and sufficient conditions because it is an open concept. And necessary and sufficient conditions would limit artistic innovation and, and originality. In 1958, William Kennick says, no definition of art is necessary or possible because just knowing English, a person can enter a warehouse full of things and pick out the artworks. Now, you can see the problem there because a lot of artworks look like real things that you find in a store or artists that use consumer products. You can't tell whether it's artwork or a supermarket item. Uh, Andy Warhol's Brillo boxes, for instance. So there's problems with that definition. The problem of indiscernibility uh, comes up when you try to apply this. Uh, Arthur Danto, the philosopher, made a whole career out of writing about the philosophical aspects of indiscernibility. So the way out that I see, the way out of trying to define art without using aspects of the art object, you know, what features does it have, is called the Institutional Theory of Art, promoted by George Dickey in 1974. His original definition is, quote, a work of art in the classificatory sense is one, an artifact, two, a set of aspects of which has had conferred upon it the status of candidate for appreciation by some person or persons acting on behalf of a certain social institution, the art world. He doesn't mention anything about exhibited qualities or aspects of the artwork. Now let me sh define what the art world is. Think of a pentangle with the art in the middle. At the top you have museum curators, which are responsible for marketing, art critics, which are responsible for advertising, art dealers, responsible for distribution, collectors, which are the purchasers and consumers, and then the artists who are responsible for producing the art. That is known as the art world economy. All these institutions support each other in the artwork. So when he first proposed this definition, a lot of artists said, hey, I feel neglected. I'm, there's no place for me. So in, later on, he revised that definition. In 1984, he, in a book called History of the Institutional Theory, he, he says this, I specified five definitions, definitions of which I regard as the core notions of the institutional theory of art. One, an artist is a person who participates with understanding in the making of a work of art. Second, a work of art is an artifact of a kind created to be presented to an art world public. Third, a public is a set of persons and members of which are prepared in some degree to understand an object which is presented to them. Number four, the art world is a totality of all art world systems, which I just went over. Number five, an art world system is a framework for the presentation of a work of art by an artist to an art world public. So that includes the role of the artist more uh, significantly. But there is, he also says, there is absolutely no element in any of these five definitions that gives the slightest impression that anything other than artists, as everyone ordinarily understands artists, create art. But there are some problems with this definition, as many people have raised. Some people think it's circular. You're using the term art to define art. But I don't think it's viciously circular, because everyone knows what, what art is and where to find it. And you know, it's not so bad that, that you need 
to have a strict non-circular definition, but there are other questions. What if a person creates a painting but does not exhibit it? Is it art? Well, according to his later definition, it is, because an artist created it. Are cave paintings and religious icons art prior to an art world conferring that status? Well, uh, I, I guess it is because it was created by somebody even though it's not exhibited in a museum. What the, who does the conferring and by what criteria is the conferring based on? If conferring is enough, without cons is it enough without considering the qualities of the object? Well, again, this is a classification issue. So you can confer art, uh, a status, an object, status of art, but not comment on what good or uh, how good or bad it is. That's a separate issue. Um, so that's the uh, institutional theory, which I find is a way out of using necessary and sufficient conditions. So further on, in 1988, Noel Carroll devised a narrative theory of art. Art is a cultural practice with its own customs, traditions, and precedents, which are not static, but constantly evolving. Artists and viewers possess a knowledge of shared conventions of making and responding to art, which is culturally specific. Strate strategies <clears throat> which relate a new object to the art tradition and history so as to include it as art. So new art can <clears throat> do it by repetition, amplification, or repudiation. By repetition, he means the art object repeats the form, figures, and conventions and themes of previous artwork. Amplification, the object expands the means for achieving the goals of an art form or to solve the problems proposed or encountered by previous practitioners of the genre. In repudiation, the object can criticize and reject a previous style and its values by being innovatively different from its precedents. So these last two strategies expand the boundaries of art in that amplification is evolutionary change and repudiation is revolutionary change. Repudiation relates to tradition in several ways. Being antagonistic to what it repudiates or it may reject art of the immediate past but resemble art from a more distant past. Three, while negating one part of tradition, it rediscovers or reinvents another part. If no relation to the tradition can be found, that is not art in that tradition. Although he doesn't say that it's not art, period. This narrative theory of art relates objects to previous art practice, just like relating to a common ancestor and family tree in the family resemblance examples of Wittgenstein. There are advantages of this theory, though. It does not limit the parameters of art, yet provides means of tracing its unity within art practice. Secondly, it integrates the rest of the cultural arena to place the art object in its context. Now, recently I uh, read a quote by Rudolf Giuliani in The New Yorker, uh, the May 28th issue. He was commenting on the um, artwork by o Chris O'Philly, which was exhibited at the Brooklyn Museum of Art, where he used elephant dung as part of the painting that he made. And of course that pissed off Giuliani, he wanted to <coughs> remove all NEA support for visual artists because of this. But he said an interesting thing. He said, if I can do it, it's not art, because I'm not much of an artist. <laughs> it's something to think about, because here again you have the problem of indiscernibility, um, where uh, a non-artist can scribble something on a cocktail napkin, whereas Cy Twomley can scribble something very similar, and that's considered great art. Now, I personally don't think much of Twomley's art, but uh, it, he's an established artist, he's a blue chip, and people will probably accept anything that he does. But Giuliani has a point, I think, uh, because anyone can do anything, but is it art or not? You know, do you have to be trained to be an artist? Do you have to... Uh, or is it all just free form, you know, whatever, whatever goes. But still, if he tries to exhibit it, the, the art world still has to consider worthy of contemplation, whether it's worthy of being shown or exhibited. Um, something to think about there. 
Well, I guess that's the end of my prepared presentation. I'm open to questions. Jan, do you have a question? <laughs> First of all, I don't know where to begin. Uh, um, I don't know where to begin. I mean, first of all, I've been in the art world for decades. My name is Jan Renflesh. I was the uh, former director of the Euphrat Museum of Art at Danza College for over three decades. So I've curated you know, hundreds of shows, not only there but elsewhere. And I've written about a dozen books. And so. Um, what struck me when I first came in the art world was the women weren't well, represented. Absolutely. And um, in your talk, I, um, in, the de in the definitions, um, I don't notice women represented. Um, I, I would throw, throw out to you right now that everything is art, absolutely everything. We don't have to do this, well, is it art or not? If you scribble on a piece of paper and it's interesting to somebody to look at, Art has two things to it. It has form, it has content. Some of it have, a, some art has a lot of form and very little content. Other art has a lot of content and very little form. But I could give you examples throughout that would say, if everything's art, that's okay. It's just, um, you have to think of your, of your world a little bit differently. When you get into definitions, it has to do, yes, like you said, with the, the art, uh, market, the art economy, the art institutions, because they make money off of it. But when it comes down to the actual artist and creativity, we are all artists, we're all creative all the time. And in my most recent book, I talk about a woman that lived over a decade ago, and um, no one would mention her name right. Well, I will. Juana Briones. She wasn't known as being an artist, but when I wrote about her, it was about the art of caring. Um, which is something she exhibited in her life. So there are many, you know, many different art forms. I just throw that out because I think there's no problem with not defining it and just letting it be. I could give examples, but I'd, I'd lo love you to comment on that. Well, I th uh, first of all, I, I agree with you with what you're saying, and also Dickie agrees as well. He says the, uh, he puts the artist back into the picture when he revised his institutional theory. <clears throat> So he says that if an artist makes uh, makes something, it's art. You know, he, he did say that. Well, we're all artists. We're all artists. There's no definition of anything not being art. I mean, there's not a this is and this isn't. There isn't. I walk into a room and I see art, and that's art on the wall. <coughs> Every single thing in here is art. I look at you, your art, what you put on this morning. That's art. That's your artwork for today how you present yourself, each of us. We make art decisions, form and content. All right, you're expanding the uh, notion of art, that's okay. Yeah, I'm that. just saying that that allows everybody to be an artist and, uh, anyway. Yeah, yeah, I don't have any disputes there. Okay. Hi, I guess I personally challenge the idea that everything is art. I mean, we have a purpose to the use of a word, and to me that diffuses the, the use of the word so broadly that it has no meaning. Uh, people can have words that have no meaning, that's fine, but I wouldn't use, I don't think art, in the way that I think about it, is devoid of meaning. So, I don't know, and, 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 then, and then you don't even put the, the, from what I understood what you were saying, and I, but I think you said it, Al, that that a person's responding to something has something to do with it being art. For example, there's some somebody shows me a blank piece of canvas and tells me that's art. I say, you can tell me it's art, but I, you, you know, BS is what my mind says. And so, and, and it has more to do with money being made, as you said, and, and that's okay. I mean, if you want to define art as you make money on it, but then there wouldn't be much art left. Anyhow, these are just some of my comments. Uh, or, uh, Al, you might want to speak to some of those wry comments I made. Yeah, well, I, I think you're um, using art as a term of approval, and uh, uh, which because when you say it's not art, well, uh, I mean it is. You just don't like it. Yeah. I have the right to say I don't like it. Yeah, you do. 
I, I have just a comment. It's a general comment because I don't, frankly, I haven't read much about it and don't know about it, but there's a whole field of aesthetics. And so on the one hand, you can say we're all artists, but I think the, in the field of aesthetics, they would, there is a sense that some, some creations and some things are of more value, more artistic value, or more aesthetic value than others. And I have no uh, real knowledge about how they do this, but I don't see how you can define art without getting into the issue of aesthetics. Well, that, that's true. Uh, defining art is a basic issue in aesthetics. Well, I, I certainly agree that every, everything is art. And I'm thinking of the cave paintings and the little children who put their little finger hand prints underneath the, the things that we call art. Are they not art because, because they just did it? They didn't have anything in mind about contributing uh, any great meaning to anything. They just did it because they felt like it. And it's art. That's my feeling. Well, I think we're all born with a personality. We all have different view of things. But, but as an example, I subscribe to Harper's and um, The New Yorker, and they often have many samples of poetry, so-called. To me, it's bunk. <laughs> it's incomprehensible. And that is also uh, probably my reflection on other types of art also. You know, it's, we'll probably never understand this. It's like we will never understand gravity <laughs> or, or uh, other uh, th things of nature. But I, it, the, the whole thing is so nebulous, I would have to give up. Well, instead of giving up, why don't you educate yourself about well, it? Then like you can I understand, say, I try you to can read understand this, it better. The so-called poetry is bu bullshit. God has spoken. <laughs> um, this reminds me of uh, a Supreme Court justice, I forget his name. Uh, he was asked in a definition, and the subject was pornography, and he simply says, I know it when I see it. Okay, in addition, let's say, what I would say when I see it, uh, there's a famous artist, uh, name it starts with P. Pollard or something like that, that what he does is lay a canvas on the floor and drop paint and you get a sparkling effect. Now, I have seen elephants do the same thing. I have seen, uh, uh, you know, a grammar school or, uh, you know, students uh, do that type of thing, and I don't see the difference. So, uh, th that whole collection of uh, art, so called art, is, I don't see it personally. So, you don't think that's art then? No, you don't, I don't think Pollock is doing artwork? Uh, no. Uh, well, you should. Because, it, the, the reason why he's accepted is because there's a hierarchy of popular people involved in money, like we said. And if he did it, it's great art. If a child did it, it's nothing. Actually, when he started making art, the, the, it wasn't worth that much when he first started. And he's the first one to start that, to do that kind of work. And uh, there is a concept behind it. You, know, you should read up on well, it. Well, yeah, but uh, some people have... Uh, chaos in their mind and they love chaos and that's all they, uh, is, is totally to be is chaos. So if you love chaos, that may be art. Okay. Well, perhaps I will be a little repetitive because some things I want to say was already said in part, you know. I don't, I'm, a, I'm not an expert in painting, for instance, but I'm very much in music and I think there are similarities, you know. Uh, at least with music, and I believe painting is the same thing in other arts, forms. 
uh, it depends on the taste of the consumer, the person that appreciates or not the art, you know. And I don't know any person that appreciates every form, you know. There are some in music that likes Baroque music, some others likes the uh, contemporary composers, that others consider that are horribly dissonant, you know. Uh, so uh, I believe uh, if it's a way to define it that exists, uh, define art, it has to be defined in a uh, function of the consumer, you know. Uh, art could not be the same for all the people, you know. And I, I don't see how, you, how we can generalize that, you know. So if there is a group of persons at least, uh, bigger or smaller, that appreciate some form of creation, for them it's art because they, in them they evoke some emotions and uh, that is art for them. For others, not. I wanted to superline that. I think one of the things that ought to be included in this discussion is the value of art to disturb people and to cause uh, offense and we've heard some of it here. <clears throat> Jackson Pollock is a good example. Uh, you mentioned the elephant dung at the Brooklyn Museum, or someone did. Um, I'm thinking uh, the early works of Picasso uh, were attracted a lot of uh, opposition. People, who, especially the simple cubist paintings and the line drawings, um, but I think no one can um, uh, say that Guernica is not an artistic piece. And it was very disturbing, and I think there's a value of being disturbed by art in ways that you might not be otherwise. Yeah, that's true, although Picasso's early work was not that way. His blue and rose periods were very traditional looking. It was only during his Cubist period that things looked, you know, disturbing. No, it's, Guernica is pretty disturbing. No, I'm not denying that. Yeah. Go ahead, Tom. Um, I think that when you look at uh, art, the definition of art, I look at it like I would a, uh, what constitutes a story, what constitutes a dance. Uh, there's different degrees of excellence, that's true, but a problem with human nature is our tendency to categorize life, to put life in strict categories with strict definitions that make us feel comfortable. And so when we look at art from our personal selfish point of view, we of course say, I'm the judge of what constitutes art or dance or whatever. But, and the same for music. If I'm just snapping my fingers, and for me, if, if this is a sort of a rhythm, this is music. And if I'm moving a little bit to that, that's dance. And if I tell you what I did yesterday, and I use a little imagination and elaborate a little bit, then I'm making a story. There's different degrees, uh, different perspectives on stories, on music, on dance. And the same thing with philosophy, the same thing with religion. But we have to be very, very careful about how we have this tendency to actually cut off our potential for aesthetic experience if we box ourselves in with these very strict definitions. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm reminded of a definition, I think it was of poetry, which is it's a, an attempt to put a, an emotion or a feeling into words. And I think that's a lot of what all art is. Uh, the thing is, sorry, there, whether it resonates with you or not is determines whether you see it as art and there may be, you know there are a lot of efforts out there that I regard as unsuccessful um, and I wouldn't call them art but that doesn't mean that someone else doesn't really appreciate it 
So that so means it's, an it's object. It's a subjective thing. Well, that means whether that, it's art is subjective. So if the subjective opinion differs, that means it can be art in one sense and not in the other. Art so, for one person, not for yeah, another. Yeah, but see, that's not what I'm trying to get at here. I'm trying to get at art as a classification sense, as a category. So and when one person approves, activity, one person who approves it says not art, and the other one says, "Oh yeah, I like it, so it's art." Well, how, how can it be two opposites? You know, the, the art object itself. I would say, for it to be art, there has to be something there for someone to appreciate, and it may only be the artist. Well, there, there you go. I started discovering something about what's called conceptual art some time ago, and it seems like it's kind of a transparent idea. This is, this is here in the art is what made me decide to make this, and it's usually some kind of a statement, and you're lost if you can't understand it. I'm not saying it's bad that you, if you can't, but you, you lose something. Something is lost in translation if you can't figure out what that statement was that caused the person to make the art. Um, I have a question on the essence of art. If humanity didn't exist, would there be art? If there was nobody there to perceive it? For example, if I took a photo of um, Yosemite Valley, it's pixels, and I can print it or project it, and if there's nobody there to receive it, and, and nobody took the picture, would there still be art there in the valley, the, you know, half dome or whatever? Or take the, the cosmos. If you look at one of the nebulae out there, they're just gorgeous. You see a picture from the Hubble telescope. But if there was no humanity, no sentient beings around, wouldn't there be art? Well, it would, it would not be art if, if no one created it, if no human being created it. Does that make it not art? It, it, may, it, it makes uh, a statement about nature, about the aesthetic aspects of nature. <coughs> but it's, it's not art, to though. See it. But mean, it, my question is, if there were no sentient human beings, or any other type beings, would art exist? Well, someone has to make it. So if you say there are cosmos. no sentient beings, then no, it's not, it's not well, art. Well, there's a cosmos out there. Well, that's nature. It's not art. I, I don't see the distinction, person. Well, art it has to be made by a human being. Uh, that, that's a definition? That's one of the basic definitions, one of the conditions, yes. Okay. Yeah. So is the, uh, are objects and, and illustrations made by Coco or other gorillas not art? Correct. So, Cat paintings are not art. Elephant paintings are not art. Or is it more useful to have art defined broadly and say that this is human art and this is gorilla art and this is something, a category of art? No, it has to be made by a human being or arranged or found. How about photographs of nature? Out. Well, someone has to take the photograph. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, so that's well, art. Someone. Photograph by nature is taken by somebody. Yeah, right. So that would be art. That's called photography. It's called nature photography, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was exactly my question. You know, you can look at it in nature, it's what, whatever, but when you take a photograph, it becomes art, right? Because the person creates it? The, the person who takes a photograph of it, yes. Okay. Just nature by itself is not art. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is hard to define it. That's why I propose the institutional theory, which doesn't require a statement about what it looks like or what aspects does it have. Maybe it's just something that can be appreciated by others. Please ask for the microphone when you want to ask a question. It strikes me if you're defining something, you, don't you have... Uh, he, he has the microphone now. Let's, uh. No, I, I'm thinking that, that um, the definition you give has to be determined to some extent by why you're defining it. Who are you defining it for? <coughs> Defi it? Defining so communication can be had more easily, so people know what they're talking about. 
Yeah, to, but there's, there's a wide range of what people mean when they talk about especially art. To and clarify, you want to narrow it down. You want to exclude some things and not others. Well, you want to clarify art as a classificatory category versus art as a, as a form of approval, which I'm would, hearing a lot of here okay, in yeah, the questions. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, would, would, you, would you recommend that people who don't use a good definition of art stop using the word? Well, they should clarify what they mean by it. A, a lot of... Uh, when, in, in fact, I can tell how they're using it by what they're saying, usually. I'm finished. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, well, if there aren't any other um, questions, there are a couple of things that come to my mind. One is that so far there are still, I haven't noticed any women's artists' names being mentioned. So if you don't know the woman, Artemisia, and uh, <laughs> referring to that very first statement about not, you know, some words being prejudicial, I usually don't like to say women artists because we never say men artists. So it's all already something's getting messed up in your head when that comes out. It just talks about how long we've been prejudiced. But um, Artemisia Gentileschi, uh, um, in the Renaissance time period, fantastic painter. Um, check it out. Uh, one person that uh, really changed my life back in the 70s, Judy Chicago, with her dinner party at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. Huge triangular table with place settings for all these women in the arts um, with handmade uh, ceramic plates and runners and a big book about it uh, telling you the art history they probably didn't know up till at till that point she's still around she gave a talk at Stanford um, this past year and saying that art institutions still don't get it are still teaching in a way that supports the art world which is an art market an art industry as opposed to understanding the art that we all do the second thing, besides just mentioning women and then saying that, okay, well, you haven't mentioned all these different cultures either, although you said um, European and American, but we have a lot of different cultures in America that are American, that are, let's say, white American, and they have different definitions and thoughts about what art is as well and create in their, in their way. And then we have this regional thing that when I started out, there was a woman here, um, <clears throat> Consuelo Santos Killens, who was head of the Arts Council, uh, or the yeah, California Arts Council. She was from Northern California, and there was always the split between Northern California and, Cal and Southern California. She always stood up for Northern California, and she stood up for the Bay Area, and she stood up for San Jose, and she said, you have to stand up for your own community. And so, she died some years ago. I end up writing a book about this community, about the artists that we have right here that we don't often think about. We always use examples. You know, Picasso, those guys, it, you know, it's, it's like coming out of your ears after a while. We have fantastic artists here. One of them died a year ago. Her name was Ruth Tunstall Grant. We're working on an exhibit and a book of her work. And not only was she a fantastic art artist, in terms of the painting and the sculptures that she did, but she um, ran the, uh, the program at the children's shelter for over a decade. She started the outreach program at the San, uh, the San Jose Museum of Art, taking art out to kids in the, um, in, in the schools as opposed to their coming to the museum. She started three arts organizations in San Jose called Genesis, Sanctuary for the Arts, this was how we ended up getting in our world in San Jose to begin with. And the, many of these artists have gone on elsewhere, but you don't have an art world in this people. You have ground, grassroots, ground, groundwork going on. So there will be an exhibit of her work in the fall, and I hope you check out local artists. There are some fantastic ones locally. Thanks. Yeah, all that does not dispute what I said about defining art, though. Yeah, what you're mentioning is art by certain people. And you're not questioning the actual definitions that I'm giving. No, but I, no, I will... I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Let me just throw out another example. There was a... there Because I love the examples of poetry, you know, for example, just emotion into words. 
Well, there was a, a woman, and I forgot her name, she did a, um, she's a very well-known um, filmmaker, and at one point she had left the lens cap off her uh, camera, and she was just running along, and the camera was taking what it was taking, you know. So there was no thought to it at all, you know. Later, she put that into this film she made, and she just put some music with it. And, you know, it becomes art just because you kind of look at it. So that means, you know, referring to, like, the, the universe, okay, well, if our definition needs a human spectator, then, then our definition needs a human spectator. I'm not sure it does or not, but... Um, that could be just one thing that separates, you know, we have a discussion over that, but otherwise I would just say, even just running along, whether you put that music to it or not, whether you look at the clouds and actually take the photograph, or just say to the person next to you, hey, look at the clouds right there, right now, that's art. It's art between you and that person. You're sharing it at that moment. You don't have to really do the photograph. Well, <clears throat> performance art. Performance art. I have to call it that. Yeah, I guess you can. <laughs> okay. Um, so splitting hairs a bit. So we go out to Yosemite. We take a photo, and then we go home. We print out the photo and put it up on a wall or get into an art exhibit. We can all agree that is art, right? So if they don't actually print out the photo, they took, used a digital camera, and they just posted the image online, that's still art. Because there's a human agency behind it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about the bits that make up that photo? Is that specifically art? Because those bits don't actually exist. Like, I mean, they do in a, in a particular form, but in between, they, they could be, you know, lights, a you know, bit of light, you know, flashing on a fiber optic cable or, you know, in a hard drive or, um, you know, magnetic uh, uh, bits. Are those art? Is that art? Well, it depends on what the human being intends it uh, to be. If, if that's the end product, then it is, but if it's not, that it's something intermediate. Okay. So like the, um, so showing it actually on like a monitor or something, that mm -hmm. would be considered art, but the in-between medium where it's passing around bits and stuff is not really art. Yeah, it's not the final product. It's not the final product. Because there is a lot of computer-assisted artwork, and it gets to the point where the hand of the artist disappears. You know, it, it's hard to pin down where the hand of the artist comes in. Okay, so. but you could, you could make the uh, argument that it is the bits themselves are the final product because people can post stuff online, they, you, know, you can actually buy photos, specifically stock photos, online yeah. for doing various things. So the actual bits are kind of the final product. If that's what the artist intends, yeah. Yeah, the physicist to your right is probably going to knock it out for the rings. Um, okay, yeah, that's all. Is that an Android or an Apple? <laughs> you have a question, Paul? Just oh. <laughs> Going back to Max's question, uh, Max's response, how about uh, in computer we can algorithmically create art? Is that an art? We don't use hands. We are using mathematics to create yeah. art. Well, someone still has to start it. So if you exhibit the product, then it is. <clears throat> Hi. Uh, picking up on the bits discussion before, uh, could you comment uh, about... Uh, I think the appropriate name, as I recall, the pointist or the Dada movement that were little dots. Well, you're talking about a different type of painting style, which is the pointillist, which is not the same as Dada, by the way. <laughs> yeah, but could you comment how that relates to the bits? Oh, well, Why it's... Use the wrong term? No, it's, it, it, he's talking about something different. I was thinking sometimes 
probably doing a crossword puzzle, I find my pen is skipping. And I, I want to just run it across the paper to get the ink to flow again. Yeah, right. And I, I don't want to do it in straight lines, so yeah. I do kind of a squiggle. Yeah. Sometimes I look at that squiggle and it's really neat looking. Yeah. So if I frame that, put it in a museum, it becomes art. At what point would it be art? Is it just the recognition that this is beautiful? Is that enough? No, the fact that you made it. It, was, it wasn't intentionally art when I made it. It, was, yeah. it only became art when I looked at it and said, yeah. hey, that's pretty good. Yeah. So you have to find someone who's willing to exhibit it, though. But, but, uh, it, but if, even if it's not, it's still art because you made it. I'll keep it as a bookmarker. Yeah, okay. Some people see beauty in the form of clout and clout formations. Yes. Uh, clearly no person didn't make that. No person made that. Yes. Um, anyway, I'd like to also comment. I think people have alluded to uh, the question of when a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear it, does it still make a noise? Maybe you've heard the corollary to that was if a man yells out in the forest and no woman is there to hear him, is he still wrong? <laughs> I won't comment on that sexist joke. <laughs> okay, so we have bits. They're intentionally put together to form an image. We could probably, arguably, call that art, right? Because that's what somebody's putting together to be passed around online or wherever. Okay, so the artist is out in Yosemite and he has a camera and he intentionally puts the camera up to take a photo. When the photons enter the aperture of the camera, is it art then because it's intentionality or does it have to be actually captured before it becomes art? Now, yeah, it, it, it can be. If someone sets that up and works with it, yeah, it is. So it's art when the photons basically are entering, or the lights entering the camera, because it, there's intentionality behind that. And you it's have... part of the process, yeah, and the process right. can be art. Okay, so instead of having a camera, he just takes some people and puts them out in Yosemite. He's intentionally getting people out so that their eyes capture the light, is that art? <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't. I don't think so. So what? What is the difference there? You're you're capturing a camera versus you're capturing it in specifically people's eyes. So I'm not saying that the Yosemite itself is art because we already established that's nature and it's just beautiful. There's no human intention behind it. All right. But specifically taking people out to see it. Okay, I, I see what you're getting at. Yeah, there is someone directing this group, okay. so it's, I would say it's performance art, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you look at a, a view like Yosemite, wide sky, El Capitan, etc., and, and religious people would say, oh, this is beautiful, this is God, nature, well, creation, but we don't think about God, any God's creation, we just say, it's beautiful, but if you take your camera or your brushes and paint just one part of that, that's a composition of one portion of that, I think that's art because you've decided that these things together, these parts of it, the moon early in the evening through the, lay, the bare trees or sun off the top of the mountain, that little portion of it, if you capture it in a way that it's recognized as such, that would be art. Yeah, a lot of questions are dealing with accidents and chance. Well, the Dada movement depended on that. Uh, and so that there is room for accident and chance to be art, as long as someone is directing it, as long as someone who's in charge and uh, created it and, and managed it. What, what about a pinhole camera? They used to have one up uh, in San Francisco, just a dark room with one wall that has a small hole in it, looking out at a beautiful scene. Uh, and that scene is essentially visible upside down on the back wall of the room. 
Uh, do they still have that up near the uh, Cliff House in San Francisco? Yeah, I think they do. Yeah, well, is that art? Someone creates a room, puts a hole in one side, one wall, and people can come in and look at the image on the other wall. And it's looking out there over all of beautiful nature, the horizon, the Pacific Ocean, boats, etc. Well, if someone photographs it uh, and documents it, yeah, it is. But there has to be someone to document it. Well, you just walk into the room and you see it. No one has to photograph it. it it's, a, um, it it's an image that's visible on a wall. In okay, a well, that, that's nature transformed by this device. So uh, if that's all you're considering, it's another aspect of nature. It's not art. It's not made by somebody. It's not an artifact. presentation. Yeah, or an aesthetic aspect of nature. Yeah, right. You can have as aesthetic aspects of things without it being art. It was the art of cooking. Yeah, that's right. Are there any other any other questions here? Yeah, there's there's one. Oh, there. well. Just a very basic question, especially hearing all the. Uh, Hair splitting, is that the term? Hair splitting <laughs> questions here? All the hair splitting questions here made me realize the basic question which is what's the importance and significance of so precisely defining art? Are we going to Supreme Court about art? I mean, what's the importance and significance? Why are we splitting hair about defining art? It's a basic issue of aesthetics, the, the nature of artwork. It's a philosophical question. So if it's philosophical, then there is not going to be really any exact definition, in my opinion. Well, that's why I gave all these examples. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Oops, sorry. Okay, I got another one. <laughs> oh, no, here we go. Um, a while ago, I'm not, I'm not going to uh, get away from the Yosemite thing. A while ago, there was a photographer, and I'm sorry, I don't remember all the details, but he was out doing nature photos, and he left his camera out, and I believe it was it was by accident, and a, you know, a group of not monkeys, but you know, similar thing, got a hold of it, and they started taking pictures, and some of them were actually kind of good and so then he's put you know, he i forget he tried to uh get them sent around actually like tried to sell them or something and on a whole different topic there was a whole like legal battle over what the copyright was on that but so <laughs> but you said like somebody or like a cat or there was a talk about an elephant actually painting something you said that was not art right so how does how would you define this thing that happened? Yeah, I've I've, <coughs> I've read about that case. Uh, is cat paintings and elephant paintings have been exhibited in art galleries to raise money for wildlife charities. So it, in that case, uh, it has been dubbed art by this art gallery that showed them showed them. But are you, do you consider it art? Uh, no, because it's not made by a human being. So why is it important that it's made specifically by a human being versus an Be animal? Because uh, human beings have a, a concept behind it. They have intention. They have a, a uh, motivation. Uh, there's ideas behind the artwork, whereas animals don't. Okay, so if there was an animal that existed that could have intention and, and all these other qualities that you described, then you would consider it art even if it's not human? Then the definition would have to be altered a bit. Yeah, yeah. It would have to be altered to include those? Yeah, yeah, but right. I don't see that happening. Not with all the you know newfangled genetic engineering we have no, going on? No, <laughs> Probably got a little while. Yeah. Or going the other way, you know, somehow a human has his genetics are altered to be more animal-like, but that would be fine, right? Because they're still human. Well, again, you have to look at intention and concept. You know, it's it's or art of the uh, mentally disabled. 
You know, there's art like that being shown. And, and those are exhibited as well. But I just don't look at that in the same way. Okay. But it's still considered art. Thank you, Greg. Hi, what about that, you know, well-known old cliche? Beauty, and, and art doesn't necessarily have to be beautiful, but beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Um, and, you know, I mean, there might be things that were created with intention and a concept and blah, 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 and they're truly hideous, and I would never consider them art. And so, you know, what about beauty is in the eye of the beholder? Well, you can, that may apply in some cases, but whether it does or not doesn't obviate the fact that it's an artwork. The, the comment that you just made goes to my point exactly. You're using the term art as a term of approval, and I'm trying to define art as a category. Just a comment that um, let's not forget when we're uh, referring to animals that humans are animals. I think we have no more questions, in which case uh, we should thank the speaker.